Hello and welcome to a slightly different kind of lesson today. Um, today I thought I'd talk about philosophy I guess and basically a little bit of psychology um, to maybe get us through these kind of uncertain times or at least some advice that may help in the next coming weeks. I just wanted to say that absolutely everybody in the school is missing everyone. Um, we know that people have been off for a couple of weeks and that's understandable and we're trying our best with everything online so we hope that's going well for you guys and we appreciate everyone that's been engaging with that so far and please do not hesitate to reach out if you need any assistance you can phone the school we're still at school um, drop us an email whatever works for you but please get in touch if you need us um, but we're trying to accommodate for everyone and I think the way that we're going to move forward is having some lessons more like this as well to keep you guys engaged, not just with the content, but to make sure you guys are feeling okay. And any advice we can give you, I think would be beneficial. And we'd love to have some conversations with you guys online with that as well. So we are missing you all, but yeah, spare a thought for uh, the original Coldplay, uh, Chris and Martin. We cannot hug anymore. So that's probably been the biggest uh, drawback for me with this whole uh, social distancing thing. Um, and we obviously miss seeing you guys every day too. The one winner of all of this, I have to admit, is Hamish. He's enjoying getting more love. Uh, he doesn't quite understand what's going on, but that's probably not a bad thing. And uh, yeah, he's enjoying seeing us a little bit more. So every cloud has a silver lining. So we know um, as a staff, as a school, as a group of people that all want to be in our school, that there's some uncertain times ahead and nobody at this moment can really predict what's happening. Uh, we can look to other countries and see different strategies being implemented and you know we can't really draw much from that at the moment um, because every day things change so it is uncertain um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing for us okay so one of the things we need to look at is how are we going to be on the other end of this what are we going to do now what strategies are we going to employ as an individual and as a school that can help us come out the other end of this feeling stronger and better than we went in. So it's an opportunity, I hope, for most of us as well to really evaluate where we want to go in life. And this presentation is just a real short summary of things that have helped me and routines that I hope you could maybe try out. Let me know if they work for you. And yeah, try and just get work our way through these uncertain times. So being the best version of yourself is something that I say a lot in, in class and it seems easy on paper and you have to kind of look at your life to see am I being the best version of me and it's quite hard to do sometimes and I thought I'd obviously start with myself, that probably makes more sense. So I was born in 1991 and yes I was born with a beard as well um, which is probably unsurprising and now we're in 2020. So most people think their life kind of goes from here okay it's a straight line um, but obviously we know in reality it's much more complicated than that and our life can be a series of ups and downs and it's how we tackle these really determines what happens in the rest of our life so if I just look at a few of these peaks um, particularly difficult times during my life um, particularly primary school I hated school I hated high school as well so I wish I had skill set um, my PhD I didn't hate it but it was extremely hard um, moving to Australia was always a dream um, the first year was extremely difficult and then we had to get our visas and things sorted and it took a long long time so all of these ups and downs are not what you plan for but what I realized was on the other side of these peaks was great opportunities that I didn't even know existed um, so what looked kind of like unbelievable challenges at the start um, on the other side of those challenges when you overcome them you are in a much better place. So I'm grateful for those challenges now looking back because they've really helped me um, become who I am today. So the way I like to view challenges now is kind of like a mountain. You can't always see the top. You don't know what's on the other side. All you know is that if you get over that mountain, there's going to be something better for you on, that, uh, on the other side of that. And it's often the challenge of just conquering that mountain is the biggest reward so when i look back at my life i realized that had i dropped out of primary school which wouldn't be impossible but 
my life would have been very, very different. I wouldn't have went to high school, got my PhD, moved to Australia, met all of you amazing people. Um, if I'd dropped out my PhD, similar things, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Um, if I'd left Australia in my first year, again, I wouldn't have met anyone at Skillset. I wouldn't have known that amazing community existed. So yes, there were troubling times and they were hard, but when I persevered and managed to get through them, and it wasn't easy to do, it's easier said now that it's done, but when you persevere and conquer those challenges, um, you often find that there are things on the other side that you didn't even know existed. So hopefully I'm going to give you some tips today that you can maybe implement and let me know how they go. So one of the most important things I've realized this year is that responsibility and stress don't need to go hand in hand. Um, responsibility is admirable and although challenging, if you trust your own competence, so your own ability to shoulder your responsibility and carry it well, um, then responsibility doesn't need to be stressful necessarily. It's something that we can tackle. I'm not saying it's easy, but if you can take on the responsibility and in terms of you guys as our students, that responsibility of taking care of your own learning and ensuring that you guys are maintaining your education and seeking out as much advice and help from us as possible uh, would be my example of you guys taking personal responsibility. Stress is sometimes confused with responsibility and it's usually caused by a lack of preparedness or organisation or for me particularly when I'm out of my depth or I'm perceived to be out of my depth. So when I think, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, that's when I get stressed. So it's not necessarily linked to having more responsibility for myself, um, but it's when I'm not organised. So having a routine, having structure and stability, honestly, is one of the best things you can do to feel more in control of things. So I'll give you some breakdowns of routines that I think we could implement later on. So the reality, I think, of my life, I mean, hopefully I make it to 2061, that'd be good. And hopefully I look not that bad either. Um, I know that moving forward from 2020, there's going to be more challenges. Um, and I know that these challenges are going, to, are going to be just as tough as they were when I was younger. But my approach to them now is actually I look forward to the challenge. I seek out the challenge because I know when I conquer that, it's always led me to better things. So the more challenges that I can overcome, the better my life will probably be long term. So I'd encourage you guys to change the way that you look at a challenge in your own head. Don't look at it as a negative thing, look at it as a positive thing. You've been given this challenge um, because you can deal with it. And the fact that you can deal with it and overcome that challenge is going to make you who you are in the future. And we know by working with all of you guys how incredible you are. And we believe that in everybody's ability, but sometimes it's ourselves we're our own worst enemy, I guess. And we can kind of give ourselves some negative self-talk and doubt our ability. So I'm telling you from me, every single one of you is a fantastic person who has more than enough ability to tackle any challenge that comes your way. So this is the way I kind of view my life now. Um, a series of mountains and valleys and I can't really see past the horizon. All I know is that I can trust myself that I won't give up and I'll make sure that I take every challenge on um, to the best of my abilities. And if that means I need to seek help, that's fine. I can lean on the amazing colleagues and friends that I have at school and the friends that I made here in Australia. And that's important to have that strong base around you. And we're here for you for that as well. So one of the things that is particularly interesting about what's happening in the world right now is the, the idea of um, being potentially stuck in a place for a period of time, maybe in your own home, or not being allowed to go uh, certain places while government regulations are in place. And again, thinking about how we look at that, we're actually being given an opportunity here as well to take time to evaluate ourselves and our lives. So a lot of people I know, I'm not saying that's a fun thing to do if you're, you're locked in your house for a week or so or even longer, but look at that as somebody's giving you something that is actually quite precious. Time is such a valuable commodity. It's something that we can't buy. Um, you can't buy back more time. And there's a lovely little quote here. Um, time is the greatest commodity we have, yet a lot of us spend it like we'll never run out of it. We worry about money and material things, and although they are important, 
we can gain and lose them throughout our life. So we can gain money and lose money and gain it again. We can lose material things. We can buy a nice car. Then we have to sell it, get a rubbish car, then get a new car, a nice car again. We can do that through our lives. But time is the one thing that we lose every day and we can never buy it back or find some more. Okay, we have the time that we're given and that's what we have to spend and use use it um, throughout our lives. So whatever the future holds, I believe this time that we've been given just now is extremely important. And we may never have this opportunity again to look at ourselves as deeply as we can now. You guys now have a fantastic opportunity to really evaluate who am I as a person what do I want to get out of life? Um, what new routines do I want to implement? And I think a lot of people when they're older, they get bogged down with paying bills and going to jobs and looking after families. And, you know, that's just the real reality of uh, modern life. And a lot of people would often say, oh, I wish I just had time to do the things I wanted to do. Um, and now in these uh, weird and surreal and, you know, tragic circumstances in some cases, uh, we have that opportunity for that time. Um, so I think look at it as an opportunity for you to grow as an individual and test yourself and really try and evaluate what it is you want to be, how you're going to be when you come out of this. Are you going to be a better version of yourself? Are you going to be a worse version of yourself? Um, that is entirely up to you and it's your choice. And the decisions you make are the only decisions that really count because you are the one that's in charge. So I'd really, really advise you um, to take this time to look at yourself and what do you want to get out of life? Like really, what do you really want to get out of life? Because it's all in your hands um, and we can support you as much as possible, but really it's down to you. So what is it you really want to do with your life? Some quotes and quotes are good, you know, to, to help us give us a boost. We often forget them, but this one has really stuck with me. This is Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher. And he says, if you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. If you're at peace, you're living in the present moment. So I would advise all of you, it's very difficult sometimes to shut down the, the mental noise as it was in your head um, and sometimes find that, that peace and that clarity. Um, but if you can center yourself and bring yourself to this moment right now, um, then 99% of the time it's fine. You know, there's nothing going on right now at this moment that needs to cause you any stress, any anxiety, or make you feel upset. And again, I know that's easier said than done, but there's a few books that I'm going to put a list on here and they'll be in the description as well. But those books have really helped me um, be able to focus on the present more and more um, as I practice for years now. So it's not something that will happen overnight but we might as well get started now. And if you guys can master that by the time you're my age, oh my God, you guys will be absolute gurus and you'll be meditating and you'll be so zen and life will be a breeze. But if we start now, okay, this doesn't just happen. It's practice and yes, it's difficult, but I think it's so worth it um, in the long term. So when we consider our Earth, so I'm going to talk about science for just a second. You need to indulge me. But when we think about our planet, Everything can seem quite overwhelming when we think about what's happening right now as well. It's happening all over the globe. But when we realize that we are just part of this kind of blue marble, okay, with this tiny little planet that's orbiting around the sun, um, from this distance, things don't seem too bad. And if we zoom out again, that's where we live. Every single person <laughs> is living on that tiny blue dot. And all the problems do seem... Uh, important and they are important I'm not trying to make um, light of the issues that are happening but give yourself a little breathing space as well okay you're not in control of everything in the whole world right now that's happening you're only in control of what you can do in your own life keep yourself safe and your family safe and I think that's something that gives you a bit of breathing space when we think about it from a bit of a distance and realize how small we really are that gives us, it frees up some space in our brain to think of other things as well. So, as you know, have you been in my science class? We are this rocky planet surrounded by hundreds of millions of stars in a galaxy. One galaxy, the Milky Way, and there's hundreds and millions of galaxies. So we're just this tiny blue dot 
and we are important it's important to us when we live here um, but we are just part of this greater thing and one of the things I want you to think about if you do have to stay in your house for a little while is you can always go out and look at the stars and one of my favorite things about living in Australia now is the stars at night they're unbelievable every night I see a shooting star if, I'm, if it's a clear night you'll see satellites um, you can see constellations and one of the things that I always try to remind myself which I, I teach you guys in your 10 is that we are made of stardust so Carl Sagan a famous scientist came up with this quote but every fiber of your being was forged in stars every breath you take supplies oxygen to your blood which is rich in iron and all of these chemicals interact without you even thinking about it so take a deep breath and realize that every element in your body came from those stars that you're seeing at night time and without those stars we would not exist and also remember there's so many random chances made it possible for Earth to be hospitable in the first place. Our own moon used to be a part of this planet. We are close enough to our own star to reap the benefits of its energy, but not too close that the energy destroys everything on it. Look at the moon at night and envision that process of accretion of the planets forming. There are much larger things at play than what is happening right now in our planet. And you're part of this amazing chain of events that has led you to this moment right now. And just look at our universe. Look at how many galaxies are out there, how many planets, how many stars, dark matter, black holes, white dwarfs, main sequence stars, Cepheid variable stars, pulsars, neutrons. There's so many amazing, incredible things happening out with this planet that you can learn about and you know, give yourself that mental distance, take a break from the planet for a while. So this is Marcus Aurelius. He was a Roman emperor. If you've ever seen a Gladiator with Russell Crowe, he's the Roman emperor at the start who is um, taken over by his son Commodus. Um, but Marcus Aurelius was a really interesting character. So 2000 years ago, he was in charge of Rome and he was obviously well, the most powerful man on the planet at that point. But he also wrote some journals to himself which have been titled The Meditations and it's one of the best books I've actually ever read in my life and he has it's just full of these little gems and he never intended for them to be published um, I think they were just personal notes to himself um, but they're fantastic it's such an amazing philosophy um, it's called Stoicism so you may have heard of that but I'd recommend looking it up and his one of my favourite quotes from him is you have power over your mind not outside events realize this and you will find strength so you could worry every single day of your life about external things but those external things will happen regardless if you're worrying about them or not the one thing you do have control over is you and that is pretty much it and that's pretty liberating and scary at the same time what i'd recommend to you guys is focus on your mind okay if you can control your mind and make yourself at peace then this is going to be a powerful tool for you moving forward in the future so here's some of my practical advice okay this is your homework um, for the weekend i want you to make a routine and stick to it okay i want you to read or listen to audiobooks as much as you can and i'm going to give you a list of books that i would recommend you start reading now and number three i want you to look after your brain I'll explain how we can do that in a little second. First, routine. So this is from Mark Aurelius's meditations and they're split up into small little books. So this is the start of book five and this is probably my favourite quote. And he's basically talking about when you wake up in the morning and he's talking to himself. So he's just written this in a diary, talking to himself. I'll read it out for you. He says, at the break of day, when you're reluctant to get up, have this thought ready to mind. Am I getting up for a man's work? Do I still then resent it if I am going out to do what I was born for, the purpose for which I was brought into this world? Or was I created to wrap myself in blankets and keep warm? But this is more pleasant. Were you then born for pleasure, all for feeling, not for action? Can you not see the plants, birds, ants, spiders, bees, all doing their own work, 
each helping in their own way to order the world. And then you do not want to do the work of a human being. You do not want to hurry to the demands of your own nature. But one needs to rest too. One does indeed, I agree. But nature has set limits to this too. Just as it is set eating and drinking. And yet you go beyond these limits. Beyond what you need. Now in your actions, though not any longer. Here you stay below your capability. So what he's saying here is, what were you put on this planet to do? Were you put on this planet to lie in till midday every day? Lays about, do nothing, and then go back to sleep? I don't think so. So when you wake up in the morning, I agree and I get it. It's not easy. You wake up and it's cold outside or it's dark, it's raining, very occasionally in Australia. Um, you don't want to go to school, you don't want to go to work. I get that. But if you ask yourself this question and kind of shake your head a little bit and say, what am I here to do? What was I born to do? And get out of bed and do it. Then that is life changing. If you can do that, I swear to God, that will change your life. And what's important is you need to figure out what were you born to do. And that isn't easy either. And we'll talk about this in later videos. But I think everyone intuitively has a gut feeling about what it is they want out of life. Why not pursue that? Why not? There's no reason to wait. You can figure out who you are now, write it all down and make strategies. How are you going to make that happen? How are you going to achieve the goals that you want to achieve? So that's one of my favorite quotes from the book. What I want you to do then every morning, so you can pause this video and write these down. This is your homework. I want you to ask yourself these questions every single morning when you wake up. Number one, was I put on this planet to sleep in and lie in bed all day? Was I put on this planet to sleep in and lie in bed all day? Number two, what kind of person do I want to be? Am I going to be someone who strives for what they want or someone who settles for what is given to them? And question three, Am I happy to spend the precious commodity of time achieving nothing? Are you going to waste your time or are you going to make every minute you have here on this planet count? I want you to really seriously ask yourself those three questions every single morning, okay? And write down your answer. See what happens in two weeks. Here's your morning routine. And you can pause and write these down. I want you to set an alarm for 7 a.m. and stick to it, okay? If you can be earlier than that, fantastic. 7 a.m. is a good time to get up. When you get up, you're gonna ask those questions, but then you're gonna make your bed immediately. Then you've accomplished something already in your day. You've already got a win, and you've only been awake for 30 seconds, that's not bad. I'll give you a minute and a half. It depends how big your bed is. Number three, get up and drink a glass of water. Go and do that. It tells your body you're awake. It kind of starts up your system. Imagine turning on your computer. It takes a little while to load up. When you drink your water, it's an indication to your body that you're awake and you're ready to, to get on with it. I want you to do it at the very least 15 minutes of exercise. You don't need to go outside running. If you want to do that, fantastic. You can do some planks, some bit of yoga. There's so many videos on YouTube for home workouts for 15 minutes. So there's no excuse not to go and do something but get your body moving, get your blood pumping, okay? Again, it wakes you up, makes you feel ready for the day. Then I want you to have breakfast, preferably something healthy, at the very least a piece of fruit, but you need to eat something. Again, we're waking up your body, okay? Your body's a machine. It needs to be woken up and told I'm ready to work, but in order to work, it needs to burn energy. You get that through your breakfast. Once you've got that, I want you to go and read or listen to an audible book for at least 15 minutes. You can read the paper, you read a fiction, non-fiction book, or listen to an audible book. But I want you guys to get in the habit of picking up a book first thing in the morning, and you therefore guarantee that every day you're gonna be learning something new, or at least moving forward in a story that you're reading. Once you've done that, you can maybe probably do that within an hour. So we'll say we're 8 a.m. I want you to get showered and get ready for the day. Okay, you sit about in your PJs all day, you're less likely to be productive. Get up. I've usually, I know it sounds daft, 
but if I'm in my house, I'm saying this to Sarah the other day, it's called the showtime effect. So I had a shirt on and I was like, oh, you look fancy. And I was like, I just had a lot of work to get done that day. So I put on the best clothes I had and I felt better for it. And as a result, I got more work done. It's crazy, but it works, okay? So get ready, fix your hair. I know I've got an afro sometimes. Fix your afro and make sure that you're ready to tackle the day. Number eight, tidy your bedroom before you do anything else, okay? You've made your bed, fantastic, but if your room's a mess, it makes it difficult for you to concentrate. Subconsciously, your brain is thinking about that mess in your, your room all day. So go tidy your room. And number nine, go through your goals list and start taking care of business. So every evening, I want you to write down what you want to achieve the next day. It doesn't need to be anything big. It could be as simple as, I want to achieve Martin's morning routine. And if you score that off and that's all you had to do that day, that's a win. Over time, I'd expect you to maybe add a few more things to your list. And I want you to start scoring goals. There's nothing, there's not a better feeling than having a big to-do list. And by the end of the day, you've scored them all out. And I know it sounds a bit daft as well, but it really works for me. I do a big to-do list in the morning. And by the end of the day, I want to have scored everything out. And then I know I've been productive and I've got what I wanted to do done. Okay, books. So one book I didn't put on there, um, I'll put in the description. I've taken a lot of the information from that routine. It's Jordan Peterson's 12 Steps to Life, An Antidote to Chaos. I think that's the name of the title. I'll put that in the description as well. But the first book I'd like you to read, and a few of you have already, and it's probably the most powerful book that I've ever read and changed my life forever in my early 20s, was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, it's a fantastic book. You can get it on Audible as well. And I'll put the link um, the description in the link. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I've already quoted a few things from there. It's 2,000 years old, this book, and it could have been written last year. It's fantastic. It's so relevant to things that are going on now. And it was really insightful as well, reading this guy's personal thoughts and his own personal routines. The third book I'd like you to read is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And when I was talking about living in the present moment, this book is fantastic for giving you strategies on how to do that. Number four is The Alchemist. So this is a fictional book, but the book is based around a journey and um, changing who you are. And it's a really fantastic read. I know it's one of Jay's favorite books and she let me borrow it and I couldn't put it down. It's not a long read. You could probably read it in a few days, um, but it's really worthwhile. It kind of gets you thinking about what journey you're on as well. And what is your destiny, essentially? The fifth book, and I think a lot of you will love this book, is by a guy called David Goggins. And it blew me away, this book. I read it last year. Uh, it came out last year, I think. David Goggins has written this book called Can't Hurt Me. And this guy has just had the most incredible life. Uh, he had a very troubled upbringing. Um, and he wasn't really doing well for himself. He was a bit overweight. I uh, felt like, you know, not a chip in his shoulder, but he just, things weren't really working for him. And he always wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And it talks about his crazy, <laughs> crazy, unbelievable journey to becoming a, a Navy SEAL. And his mindset is just insane. Um, and yeah, it's a fantastic book. And really, any excuses that you have or give yourself or talk yourself out of things, um, he kind of talks you out of that. Um just by leading by example. So superb book, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And finally, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Um, obviously, don't want to put the profanity in there. Uh, a really nice read as well by Mark Manson. And he basically, again, quite honest about his life and uh, trials and tribulations that he's went through and then how he changed that by changing his mindset really nice read as well and wouldn't take you that long to read so yeah if you can get these books through i'm more than willing to do it. another couple of lessons on each one of these books and break them down um they're all fantastic life-changing and honestly what i describe to people when i talk about these books is if you've seen the matrix and neo's sitting in that chair and he wants to learn kung fu and they're just like okay here you go and download it into his brain that is the exact way I, I look at these books, okay? You're downloading fantastic information into your brain that really changes the way that you approach life. Okay, 
talking of your brain, your brain is perhaps the most complicated organ that has ever evolved in the universe. Okay, let that sink in. You're using your brain right now to let that sink in. So we might start tripping out in a minute. Your brain is perhaps the most complicated organ that has ever evolved in the universe. So we need to treat it right, okay? It can be our best friend or our worst enemy. Our brain is super complicated. It generates our thoughts, produces emotions, releases hormones for when times we need to be more active, like cortisol that we all know about. Um, it releases hormones at different periods of our life to help us grow. Um, it allows us to process thoughts, do calculations in our brain, talk, think, listen, hear, see things. It can process all of this fantastic information. It is unbelievably complicated. And it, you have one for free. And nobody gives you a, a manual. You don't get like a flat pack instructions on how it works. You're just given this thing and then expected to just figure it all out. Fortunately, these books that I've just mentioned really help sort of organize your thoughts better because mine, before I read those books, was a bit of a mess. It helps you get a bit of mental breathing space so you're not just trapped in your own head, which can happen to a lot of people. You have thoughts playing on repeat and feelings and everything else. So the brain is amazing, but it can also be a bit of a prison if we don't treat it well. And we don't understand why we feel certain ways. When we start to read and broaden our horizons, things make more sense and it makes it easier for us to deal with certain situations. One of the things that is really important in our brain is the neurotransmitters. So these are these long strands in our brain and they send the signals across. And what gets sent across these signals or these neurotransmitters often is hormones. One of the hormones I want to talk about the one in the middle is serotonin. Dopamine, you probably heard of as well, and oxytonin, oxytocin. Serotonin is kind of known as the happy chemical. When you have high levels of serotonin, you feel better. And you can regulate the levels of serotonin in your own body. You can increase those levels and you can decrease those levels. And this is how we can sometimes get ourselves feeling a lot better or a lot worse and it can be the exact same situation but how we decide to respond to that situation can truly affect our own behavior so we want our serotonin levels to be high so one thing that decreases serotonin substantially actually can obliterate it is um, alcohol our body views alcohol as a poison and can only process one unit of alcohol per hour High levels of alcohol in the bloodstream will lead to a backlog of toxins in your body that needs to process. Hangover symptoms, including headaches, nausea, vomiting, body ache, dry mouth, dizziness and memory loss, um, all are caused by this lack of serotonin in the brain. And if you are feeling depressed or down before alcohol, you will feel much worse the next day. So what happens is serotonin is actually temporarily boosted when you have alcohol. So when you have that first couple of drinks, it boosts you and you feel happy and you feel a bit better. But it's temporary. You've actually now boosted the level so much it kind of obliterates all your serotonin levels in your brain. And they're destroyed. There's none left. So the next day you have no or very little serotonin left. So not very happy. And it takes a long time for that to build up. It could take two, three, four, five days, even up to a week to get your serotonin back up to a normal level. So if you're feeling not great, I wouldn't recommend alcohol as a coping strategy. Something that has the opposite effect is exercise. Exercise boosts your levels of serotonin and other important chemicals such as endorphins. So endorphins are a group of hormones which in, uh, produce an analgesic effect. An analgesic effect is similar to a painkiller. Your body produces these hormones during exercise to limit your perception of pain. And it may not come as a surprise to you as anyone that's been to the gym and really pushed it or tried to run up a hill. Okay, your legs start to hurt. But the hormones that are produced target the brain's reward system. 
which also induces feelings of pleasure and euphoria. So in short, if you're feeling down, stressed, angry or sad, or just need a bit of a boost, please do a little bit of a workout. If you're able to get outside and go run, do that. Exercise is the opposite effect of alcohol. Okay? It boosts your serotonin levels. And if you do sustained exercise over a long period of time, it can increase the baseline level of your serotonin. So it gets higher and higher. Um, so that is my recommendation for you guys as well. Okay, please look after yourselves and know that we are all thinking of you and we love you. Please keep in touch with us all. And you know we're on the end of the phone, Google Classrooms, school still open as well if you do need to come in. Um, so please look after yourselves and yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.